Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll review the first time yield and roll throughput yield metrics that are used in Lean and Six Sigma to measure process performance. There are no prerequisites for this lesson, so let's start by defining what first time yield is. Well, first time yield is a measure of the percent of non defective units successfully output from the first time through a process. So the gap for first time yield, that is 100% minus the actual first time yield percentage, that gap is equal to the potential waste or the number of defects in the process that can be eliminated. Or you might also refer to it as the percent defective. Now, first time yield is ideally a measurement of the capability at the sub-process level that contributes and rolls up to the rolled throughput yield, which we'll get to in just a second. So to adequately measure the first time yield though, we have to have a clear definition of what a defect is and how to measure those defects. Those things must be predetermined before we can have a true measurement of what the first time yield is. Now, what is the rolled throughput yield? Rolled throughput yield is a measurement of the true yield of the capability of a process, a process that's generally made up of many sub-processes. The actual calculation for rolled throughput yield is rolled throughput yield is equal to the first time yield of process A and times the first time yield of process B times first time yield of process C and so on for as many as each of these might represent a sub-process. So let me show you an example of how this calculation works. Let's presume that we have maybe four sub-processes. We have process A that has a first time yield of 95%, which sounds pretty good. And you also have another sub-process, process B, also having a first time yield of 95%. Again, that sounds pretty good. Plus you have another process C and process D. Four different processes, each of them having a 95% first time yield. But if you were to calculate the rolled throughput yield, actually the rolled throughput yield would be only 81.5%. So, although the yield for each of these different sub-processes is 95%, which sounds pretty good, when you multiply each of these out, the rolled throughput yield is actually reflecting the best possible capability for all of these sub-processes, which is only 81.5%. So from a practical example, rather than just saying 95%, let's just say there were 100 items that went through process A. If 95% if is the first time yield for process A, that means only 95 of those 100 items actually were successful the first time and were passed through to process B. So now you only have 95 items instead of 100 as an input to process B. That means if process B is 95% first time yield, only 95% of the 95 that were passed to it are actually successful. So 95% of the 95 is really only about 90. And again, those 90 are what's passed on the process C and then so on. So basically, the best capability you can expect for having these four different sub-processes, each with a first time yield of 95%, the best possible yield you can expect overall as a roll throughput yield is only 81.5%. That means out of 100 items, starting in the beginning, beginning with process A, we can expect at the end, having gone through all these four different processes, only about 81 or 82 of those items are actually going to be successful the first time through. Now, in this way, by looking at roll throughput yield, it can help expose any hidden factories that may exist within the process that could affect any risks for defects or delays. So this measurement of every sub-process should be rolled up to the measure of their contribution to the overall process that they support. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. What I'd like you to do is to identify at least one process that you interact with regularly that has more than one sub-process, where each of those different sub-processes are also being measured. Now what I want you to do is determine the first time yield for each of those sub-processes. Then based off of that, calculate the rolled throughput yield for the entire process. Now ask yourself, how does this rolled throughput yield differ from how the entire process was previously measured and evaluated? And which of those sub-processes is making the greatest negative contribution to the overall rolled throughput yield? And what are the opportunities are to improve that particular sub-process that's causing the greatest negative contribution to the rolled throughput yield? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.